Hello guys and welcome to another Multimaps workflow tutorial with me, Eldrin from Logisil Lumiere. Today we're going to be going over the skin shader in Arnold. In our previous tutorial, we went over the uh, standard shader subsurface scattering, which is really, really good and really efficient for creating um, characters that are cartoony or character or characters that uh, don't really require that much detail as far as skin shading is concerned. Uh, it's also very useful for creating plastics and milk and um, candles and all those kinds of sorts of things that have a heavy subsurface scattering to them. Um, but uh, for advanced characters with um, blood flow and you know they blush and there's a little bit more detail and oomph to them the skin shader in Arnold is an exceptionally good shader, uh, probably the best skin shader I've used um, thus far, and uh, it does a really great job of bringing out that detail. So without further ado, let's get into it. So if we go ahead and go to our skin material here and open it up, we've got a basic standard shader network here, and right now our eyes and our teeth, our gums, um, everything is being driven through this network. So right now it would be um, with everything being driven through the skin shader it would be a little bit tough. Um, so there are ways around it. Um, using uh, maps you can basically switch your shader network and I'm going to show you how to do that um, a little bit later in this tutorial but for now what we can do is we can go ahead and type in skin here into our search and we can hunt down the skin shader and we can go ahead and pipe that directly into the beauty port and so everything's going to gain that skin shader and so if we go ahead and render this this is what we're looking at initially alright so let's dive into the parameters of the skin shader here so we have the SSS weight which defines how much weight the uh, overall skin effect is giving alright and typically you're going to keep that at one um, and then we've got three layers to our skin shader so we've got shallow scatter mid scatter and deep scatter and so these relate to uh, the concept of uh, human skin or um, to the concept of other materials that have multiple layers of uh, depth in to them so in relation to human skin the shallow scatter defines the uh, the top epidermal layer. Um, it's the uh, brown or white skin that you you see normally when you uh, wake up in the morning, or uh, when you're looking at somebody. Um, and the color of that layer um, typically would be a color that would be associated with. Uh, something that has like no blood flow at all so um, typically a corpse um, so you're looking at usually like a a greenish color here or you know just a bloodless color your mid scatter is going to be uh, your your diffuse basically so you can take your original diffuse layer color here and you could actually pipe that directly into the skin shader and that would pretty much be about what you would expect. Um, mid scatter is pretty much the fatty layer of the skin, the yellow, uh, meaty stuff that's like directly under the epidermal layer. And um, finally, your deep scatter is going to be your blood and your blood vessels and all of that junk. Um, so all the visceral stuff that goes underneath. So with these layers, um, you have to think of it in a real world type term, not 
like how how deep is the initial uh, subdermal layer or, or epidermal layer of my skin, you know, before before I start to go raw and I start to see a little bit of yellow there, you know, if I get like a scrape, you know, how deep can that scrape go before, you know, I really, really, really start to see bone and blood and stuff like that. Um, well, no, more, more, the, more like the fat. And, um, you know, typically these measurements are good. Uh, one decimal place wise, I should say. So, um, 1.5 centimeters, give or take, um, is pretty decent. Actually, looking at my ruler here, 1.5 might be a little bit deep, um, but I've actually gotten pretty good results with 1.5. Um, that being said, it's it's just the uh, upper subdermal layer, so anywhere between like 0.5 centimeters and 1.5 centimeters is probably going to be pretty good. Here, if you move the decimal place over one spot, you're going to be left with 2.5, which goes a little bit deeper into the body. And then finally, the deep scatter is going six centimeters deep into the body. And that's going to give you some pretty decent results out the box. Um, once again, probably 0.5 to, to 1 or 1.5 here. Uh, the mid scatter maybe one centimeter to two point five, and then the deep scatter probably three or four centimeters deep into the body is where you're going to start to experience uh, blood, you know, the heart, the liver, all that kind of good stuff. So those are your measurements, uh, and the weights in general are pretty good. Um, if you think about this in relation to the standard shader subsurface scattering, um, you're trying to at least with most human organisms or uh, animal organisms, different things like that, usually there's like red blood. So the light penetrates far enough to get most of the red color. All that red color gets, all the photons get scattered inside your body and they bounce all over the place and they pick up a lot of that red and then they come out. So that's the reason why in the standard shader subsurface scattering, setting up that red and pulling down that green and that, uh, that blue, that's the reason why that works. Here in the skin shader, it works more on a physical level um, because the light that goes into the body is reaching the deep scatter, which is red. It's scattering around and that's how you're getting that red out. So we're getting a lot more red here than we're getting uh, this original uh, standard shader color and we're getting a lot more red than we're getting this white color that the shallow scatter is giving us. But they all work together and they give you this really, 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 really nice look. Alrighty. So how do we generate um, the two other maps that we need in order to actually have this look great because right now we're just getting you know this this pink blob of sorts and she doesn't really look like herself anymore well what we can do is if we didn't actually have these maps generated for us properly we can go into Photoshop and we can use a little bit of manipulation in Photoshop to go ahead and get these maps so if we load up the uh, tested directory here and we go ahead and pause Arnold. And then we go over to our textures and we go to test of two. Got all our textures here. And actually what we need to do is really go to the original textures folder. That's where all our unconverted textures are. And here we go. We've got the three major textures here that we want to actually apply uh, new looks to. So our diffuse is our mid scatter. We can go ahead and open that up in Photoshop. All right, Photoshop will load up. All right, so once again, it's gonna be that corpse color that we're talking about here. So it's gonna be a slight green. 
And so what we're going to do is we're going to use hue and saturation as an effect here. And uh, we're just going to dial this over towards blue here a little bit. And that's going to kind of sort of push us towards that green color. And uh, that's all we need to really do for the shallow scatter. So we can go ahead and save this as a TIFF, preferably. And um, the abbreviation that I use for shallow scatter is SSCT. And LCW compression is really great. Saves a lot of texture space, especially when you're dealing with 8K textures and more um, film-ready characters. Alrighty. And so what we can do now is we can actually tear off this, uh, this window here. And uh, we can actually load up our other textures. So if we load up the uh, torso, all we have to do now with this window torn off here in Photoshop is we select this window and that opens up the layers for this Photoshop file and we just drag that layer into the one behind it which is the torso and now the torso has that adjustment that we made here in the uh, face excellent and so now we can save the torso out and we'll save it as S scatter Alrighty, and then we just need to do the same thing for the limbs. So coming in here, we can go ahead and drag the limbs into Photoshop. And then we can come over here and we can drag and drop the hue and saturation. And uh, we are done with our shadow scatters. All right, now what we should probably do is go ahead and actually open up the uh, torso shallow scatter again and have it on hand available to us and uh, vice versa. Let's go ahead and open up the face shallow scatter as well and have it open and available to us too. And um, let's go ahead and save the face shallow scatter as DSCT for deep scatter. All right. And for the deep scatter, I like to use a different adjustment layer. Um, this one I like to have a little bit more control and the color balance is a really, really, really good adjustment layer that gives you a lot of control over your color balance. And so we're gonna go ahead and push this into the red territory. Um, play around with the purple a little bit, play around with the yellows and the blues, I'm trying to get a deep bloody color here. Um, the shadows, we can go ahead and dial those in as well, get these really deep red shadows going just a little bit, tiny, tiny bit of purple in there. And uh, we'll stay away from the yellow really, maybe I'll add a little bit of blue. And the highlights come in here as well. We'll go ahead and add just a tiny, tiny bit of red in the highlights. I don't want to saturate it entirely too much. Maybe a little bit of magenta and um, maybe just a little bit of blue. All right, so we dialed that in pretty nicely. And um, an instructor that I watched at one point recommended uh, blurring the layer as well. I've had mixed results with the blurring. Um, in some situations, yeah, it works really great. In others, it reduces the detail a little bit. Um, so I'm, I'm on the fence about doing that. Um, basically what you can do is you can right click here and convert uh, your background to a smart object. And now you can use non-destructive workflows here in Photoshop to basically edit this uh, layer. You can come in here into your filter, you go to blur, and you can go to Gaussian blur. And you don't want to blur it too much. You just want to blur the details just a little bit. 
you know, just to, cause the uh, visceral layer and all that, it's just, it's really like a lot of veins and, 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 and blood. There's not like a lot of that really fine bump detail in that, in, in the lower regions of your body, basically the, uh, the internals. So that, that's the concept with this blur is that you're blurring out a lot of the detail to give you more of a, uh, more of a blood like layer, you know, but because this is a, uh, smart filter, you can always turn this off or completely get rid of it, trash it like so. And you can just remove it if you want to. And it doesn't affect the original layer. So really nice non-destructive tip there. All right. And then we can go ahead and use the same technique as we used before. So using the face as a template here, we can go ahead and tear it off. And we can go ahead and copy the layers from it. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab both of these layers, drag them into a master project or into uh, the torso project, I should say. And then uh, what I will do is I will convert the background into a smart object. And I will just drag the smart filters from one layer to the other, like so, and then trash the layer that doesn't make any sense. And then can also delete the hue and saturation. And there you go. Now the torso is good to go. So we'll save that. And we'll save that as a D scatter 1002. And we just need to do this one more time. So we'll take these two, drag them into the limbs. Let's close the torso. We're done with the torso. Let's save this real quick as a deep scatter. 1003 and then we're going to convert this into a smart object and we'll drag the smart filters over and now I'm just grabbing the two smart the smart filter icon which is like a, a white circle with a gray circle behind it and I'm just dragging it from layer, one layer to another because these are both smart objects you can drag the smart filters between each other but it only works once you've made it a smart object and then of course we can delete the hue and saturation filter and the uh, temporary layer that we copied over from the original project. And uh, there we go. And we'll save this again. All right. And so now we have a deep scatter and a and a and a shallow scatter that we can plug into our shallow scatter and our deep scatter here. So let's take our image node here and duplicate it twice. And then um, because we know our naming convention is S scatter, we can just type in S scatter here and it'll automatically update. And then uh, we'll type in deep scatter here and that'll automatically update as well. And then um, the only thing that we're going to need to do now is just generate TXs for those TIFFs that we generated. Um, as for these two nodes, we need to plug them into our skin shader. So let's go ahead and plug the shallow scatter into the shallow scatter color. And let's plug the deep scatter into the deep scatter color. That should take care of that. Alrighty. And so I'm gonna go ahead and do the conversion. Um, if you can't remember the conversion process, I've done it in a couple of tutorials now, but uh, the tutorial on standard shader has a very detailed uh, explanation of that process. And so I'll see you guys right back at the break. Hello guys, and we're back. Okay. And so all of our textures have been uh, converted and properly set up. So created a convert folder here. This, uh, you can just dump textures in here. It's really easy to just go ahead and use the texture manager 
to point it to that convert folder and then just go ahead and convert stuff. Let's change the name of this to convert. And then anything that's in there at any point in time, you just hit create and it'll just convert all that stuff in there. So that's really nice. Uh, especially since I find myself constantly creating a conversion folder for TX stuff. So I've created um, two black uh, textures. Uh, I went over this in the last tutorial, of course, uh, the standard shader. Uh, sometimes you have to create these black uh, textures to basically handle the case where Arnold is going to go ahead and try to look for 1004, 1005 because you have those UDIMs set up. So this uh, keeps Arnold from complaining, of course. Now, um, I've used LZW compression in TIFF to compress these down. So you can see that this texture here, of course, is 36 megs. But if you look at this texture here, it's only un uh, one uh, 1.19 megabytes. So uh, the compression, because this is pure black, it significantly reduces it down. And um, we also get significant savings in the TX department as well. So TX doesn't really blow these up. It also uses some sort of compression and we actually have, they actually take up less space than even the TF, than even the TIFFs do, which is really, really, really nice. All right. So with all that set up, of course, uh, this is the look you get in the end here. And uh, she's looking very, very, very vibrant, um, very alive here. Of course, the uh, eyes, they're also using the skin shader now as well. And the look for those may or may not be um, quite what you want. Um, the standard shader look might be a little bit better or um, like I typically do, I typically uh, remove the eyes completely from the mesh actually and do those completely separate with uh, completely separate materials. But uh, the fingernails are another situation where uh, you might also not want them to be completely skin shaded. You might only want like 50% of the skin shade and then uh, you might want to have the standard shader taking care of the rest to give you more and more specularity to those perhaps. So what you can do here is you can actually mix both of your shader networks together and achieve a result that mingles both of them. So. The skin shader and the standard shader both need to go into this bump, obviously, so you get the bump detail back to your character. Um, but you need to figure out some way to pipe these two into uh, some sort of node that's going to allow them to be mixed based on perhaps a texture or some sort of procedural technique that you might end up using. So in our particular case, we're going to go ahead and use the texture method. So we can use a mix node or any number of other nodes as well in here. AL layer is a really good node as well that um, allows you to mix two layers together and um, it's also got AOV capabilities to it as well. So um, it uh, it's a very, very powerful node. The mix node is pretty simple as well, um, and uh, it simply requires some sort of texture or some sort of a uh, numeric value to drive the mix. Um, in this particular case, I think we're going to go ahead and use AL layer. It's going to be just a little bit stronger um, for our purposes, and we can use those AOVs and compositing, of course, to do some really interesting things. So let's plug this standard shader into layer one and plug the skin shader into layer two. And we'll plug the whole entire setup into our shader. And then finally we'll pump the bump back into the beauty.
And so now we get the bump and we get the uh, AL layer. Alrighty. As for the mix, right now it's using the standard shader. So if we mix this up to one, it's going to use the skin shader. And so all we need to do now is just pipe a layer or a texture of some sort into the mix and then we can control whether or not the skin shader is used or whether or not the, the standard shader is used. And it still keeps our network nice and, and clean here as far as, well, not our network, but our uh, material manager nice and clean here. We can still keep four textures, but we're just using one shader to do heavy duty here. So basically what we need to do is we need to plug in a UDIM texture into our mix. So let's grab a image here. And we need to plug some sort of UDIM based um, image shader into the mix that's going to drive each UDIM's uh, properties, allowing us to turn on and off um, the skin shader based on simple painting. So the name for that uh, could be something like. S and then uh, C weight. So we're going with a four letter naming convention, something like that, maybe, or something like that, you know, for skin weight. Or skin. SKW or something like that anyway you know so you come up with a nice four letter naming convention for that and um, we just need to create these textures now so zero will be black and one will be white and one is our skin shader completely on it looks like and zero is our standard shader completely on so all we need to do now is just figure out exactly which UDIMs that we want to turn off. So for that, we can go into the production UV layout and we can come over here and we can grab test as mesh and show the UV mesh. And uh, here we go. And so, Probably at this moment, the only thing that we really want to turn off is the eyes and the teeth. So those we're going to go ahead and set the black and then everything else will be set to white. And so this is really, really, really simple. Uh, based on our shader network, um, let's see, so we called it SKSW for lack of a better name off the top of my head. So let's go ahead and open up any one of our textures. And we know that the skin needs to be on, so we can go ahead and hit X in Photoshop to go ahead and switch our default colors. They were on black and white. We want to make white the foreground color, so we fill with white. Then we can go ahead and hit Alt Backspace. And go ahead and save that as SKSW001. Excellent. And we'll use LZW compression to go ahead and save some space. And then we can hit Shift Control S to go ahead and do a save as. And we'll save this as 2. And Shift Control S again. And we'll save this as 3. And so we're done with those maps. Now all I have to do is just invert the colors with X again, do an Alt Backspace to fill with black, and we'll do a Control Shift S again. We'll save this as four. 
and control shift S and we'll save this as five. And there we go, there's our mask. And then once again, we can always use those body paint techniques. You could use Mari, you could use Mudbox, you could use 3D Coat, you could Z use ZBrush, uh, all the tools at your disposal um, to go ahead and paint the masks exactly where you want things to go. Um, I mean, this technique is very advanced. Uh, you could use it with multiple different shaders. Uh, maybe you want to have makeup on her face. And so you'll have like a red standard shader. It's like pure red or whatever. And maybe you'll paint a small mask that would only put like a little bit of like red on the face. Perhaps it's like a reflective red or something like that. Maybe it's some sort of metallic kind of sort of uh, makeup that only happens in a certain animation. You know, you could paint that map, maybe even animate that map even, so you have animated makeup. And um, you could use this kind of sort of setup to do that temporarily for a particular shot or something like that. You know, none of this stuff has to be baked, and it's all very, very, very uh, configurable. So it's pretty incredible. Let's go ahead and plug this uh, image into the mix. And finally, let's go over to our folder here and go to our original textures and uh, we'll go ahead and plug SKSW textures into our convert folder and convert and I'll see you guys back at the break alrighty and so we're back and uh, all those textures are converted and uh, here's your final result and uh, here's your final network for something like this. So we've got an AL layer driving a standard shader and a skin shader uh, with a texture driving a mask, allowing us to switch between standard and skin depending upon what we paint. Uh, we've got subsurface scattering color driving the standard shaders subsurface scattering, lines turn off subsurface scattering there as well, like we did in the other earlier tutorial. And um, it's also allowing us to, of course, get a colorization depending upon uh, what is plugged into that color. Um, we've got a composite that's driving our uh, specular, allowing us to tighten our specular up. Uh, over here in the skin shader, we've got the diffuse color driving both the diffuse of the uh, standard shader and the mid scatter of the skin. Um, we've got a shallow scatter and a deep scatter driving their associated properties on the skin, giving us this layered skin effect. And we've got a bump, which is being driven by the bump maps and that's going to give us some fine micro detail. Alrighty. Um, using some of my other Arnold tutorials in my production pipeline series, of course, you could also plug in displacement and you can get some really nice displacement, really nice wrinkles going, some really nice fine micro detail on the uh, flesh here. And um, using something like the uh, C4D bitmap shader. Bring in a bitmap shader here. Of course, this gives you all the uh, controls that you're used to uh, with a typical C4D image node. So of course, you can come in here and actually uh, bring in a series of images like we've done, like we did in the uh, test of forest walker. Um, scenes that we did in a, a few tutorials ago and um, you know you could do something cool like uh, animate some sort of kind of sort of fiery texture going through the skin or something like that that would be a really great way to achieve that uh, Iron Man 3 effect um, driving a deep scatter or a mid scatter or something like that through animation you could have uh, some weird interesting blood flow going through the character and animating the character. Um, that's just using the bitmap shader. 
Now, of course, doing that quick overview of my network, I've noticed that I've left uh, just one little thing out, and the skin shader itself uh, has specularity to it. Um, and so we're not getting any of the specular from our standard shader. And so we won't get complete realism as far as our reflections are concerned on the skin without that. So coming down here, we have a few more options here in the uh, skin shader, of course. We've got specular, we've got sheen, and we've got opacity. So the skin shader specularity controls broader speculars. Um, with a roughness of zero, those reflections are going to be extremely sharp, uh, mirror-like, and at one they're going to be very diffuse. So it works almost exactly the same as uh, most of the shaders in Arnold, uh, particularly the standard shader. Uh, the sheen is for more of your tighter uh, reflections, um, so the more narrow ones, and once again the roughness uh, works exactly the same. And then the uh, IOR um, is basically like your, uh, your viewing angle, allowing you basically as it gets bigger, um, allows you to achieve some interesting effects like um, if you're doing grapes for instance uh, increasing the IOR will allow you to get that white coat on the uh, the grapes that you normally are used to seeing in, in grapes like that uh, in, in grapes um, so these two properties uh, by default the sheen is obviously turned off um, and so specular is probably the one that we're going to want to manipulate. So we could take our composite here and we can go ahead and apply that into the skin shader. And we can just take that directly from the standard shader and uh, that will finish off our skin shader. All right, and we'll just plug that into the roughness and go ahead and render this. And that's going to give us some nice skin specularity based on our actual maps. All right. Excellent. And then, yeah, um, with Sheen, uh, you could pipe in a map there and you could use that to add some wetness. So this would be great for creating like wet skin. She's getting out of a pool she's getting out of a shower or something like that. Combine that with tightening up the, uh, the specular a little bit as well and you can get some really nice wet looks. The opacity is an interesting one. Um, with this uh, being modulated by a color or with this turned up and down, you can basically create like a striped uh, pattern. So if you had a character that had uh, candy striped skin for instance, like their skin only existed in certain uh, areas and lines or something like that, you could uh, create an interesting effect with that. Um, and so typically you probably won't be messing with this much at all, but you can create some very interesting skin effects with that. Uh, so a lot of options here, a lot of power. Uh, this extends to, of course, car shaders and stuff as well. Um, you can use the mix node and the layer nodes to do all sorts of interesting blending of different textures. Um, the skin shader is obviously just one implementation of that kind of sort of uh, that kind of sort of network. And uh, we'll be using a lot of this type of uh, interesting layering of networks in a lot of the future C4D 2A technical tutorials that I plan on doing. But um, Alrighty guys, that's it for this one. Um, in the next one, I uh, want to go over the uh, Arnold TP group. Um, using this you can do some really, really interesting things with, uh, with particles to generate lots and lots of clones and kind of sort of break the limits that the C4D cloner give you. C4D is notoriously bad at object management and so using something like uh, Thinking Particles and the uh, TP Arnold group you can 
achieve hundreds of thousands of um, primitive objects uh, very easily without necessarily uh, bogging your scene down or crashing it. And, um, you can get a lot of control with that technique. So uh, we'll be looking at that in the next one and uh, see you guys then.